Breaking news. 120 plus people fear dead. Major terror attack. And once again we see the savages in the so-called religion of peace acting peacefully. At least 27 people were killed and 64 were gravely injured in a twin suicide bombing attack in central Baghdad, Iraq on Monday. This makes it the deadliest attack so far this year in the Iraqi capital which is being rocked by attacks on a daily basis. It's been confirmed that two peaceful Islamists detonated their explosive vests in Tyran Square. Tyran Square is a commercial district and meeting place for day laborers seeking work to feed their families in an economy that still hasn't been able to bounce back. Sadly on this day scores of them were killed and injured. Although Iraq did officially declare victory last month over ISIS militants who seized control of nearly a third of the country in 2014 thanks to the lax Obama administration policies. Sleeper cells and splinter groups continue to carry out attacks and bombings in Baghdad and various parts of the country. The attack in Tyran Square, also known as Aviation Square, was one of the deadliest in Baghdad since a massive truck bomb killed at least 324 people in the nearby commercial district of Karata in July 2016. The Karata bombing was the deadliest single attack in Iraq since the 2003 U.S.-led invasion that ousted Saddam Hussein from power and gave way to severe lawlessness in the region which 14 years later is still struggling to recover. Via Casualties.org January 15, 2018 UBC News, Iraq raises death toll in Baghdad attack to 38. Iraqi officials have raised the death toll from a twin suicide bombing in a Baghdad market to 38. Two police officers and four health officials say Monday's early morning attack also wounded 105 other people. They spoke on condition of anonymity as they were not authorized to release the information. January 15, 2018 WAPO twin suicide bombers target Baghdad, killing 27 in popular shopping district. A pair of suicide bombers blew themselves up in central Baghdad early Monday, killing 27 people and injuring scores more in the first major attack in the capital since Iraq declared victory over Islamic State in December. The attack also breached one of Baghdad's most secure areas underscoring the urgency of what Iraqi and American officials have said is a crucial transition from combat to traditional counterterrorism. January 14, 2018 Iraqi News, six people killed, injured in northern Baghdad bomb blast. Six people were killed and injured in a bomb blast in north Baghdad, a security source said on Sunday. A bomb went off near stores in Al-Tarmia, north of Baghdad, the source told Baghdad Today. One citizen was killed, while five others were wounded. January 14, 2018 AP, Baghdad bombing kills eight, wounds ten. Iraqi officials say a suicide bombing in Baghdad has killed eight and wounded at least ten others. Police and hospital officials say the Saturday blast struck a northern Baghdad neighborhood targeting a police checkpoint on a busy street, and that a number of policemen were among the wounded. January 14, 2018 VO, Australian surgeons fit robotic legs to Islamic State bomb victim. A young Kurdish filmmaker who lost both legs in a terrorist attack in Turkey is walking after receiving pioneering robotic surgery in Australia. Lisa Kalin was among dozens of people injured when Islamic State militants bombed a Kurdish political rally in June 2015. Her Iraqi-born surgeon says his work to help victims of terrorism is an act of resistance against fundamentalism. January 14, 2018 Reuters, Iraqi PM Abadi to seek re-election, in alliance with Iran-backed group. Iraqi Prime Minister Haider al-Abadi on Sunday announced he would stand for re-election on May 12 at the head of a cross-sectarian bloc, and receive the support of a powerful Shiite group close to Iran. January 14, 2018 Arab News, al sajjal withdraws support from Abadi and his alliance. Iraq's influential cleric Muqtada al sajjal has withdrawn his support for Prime Minister Haider Abadi because of his alliance with the Popular Mobilization Unit, PMU, factions. Abadi's alliance paves the way for the return of the corrupt, al sajjal declared on Sunday. January 14, 2018 Hurat Daily News Iraqi army takes control of Iraqi Kurdish border crossing with Turkey. 
Iraqi troops deployed on October 31 at one of the mainland crossings with Turkey, gaining a foothold at the Iraqi Kurdistan Regional Government, KRG held frontier for the first time in decades and imposing one of Baghdad's central demands on the autonomous region. Iraq's entire land border with Turkey has been controlled by the KRG since before the fall of Saddam Hussein in 2003. January 10, 2018 DoD, Army Casualty Identified SBC. Javian Shavandi Sullivan, 24, of Fort Mill, South Carolina, died January 8 in Al Anbar Province, Iraq, from a non combat related incident. Sullivan was assigned to the 16th Signal Company, 11th Theater Tactical Signal Brigade, Fort Hood, Texas. The incident is under investigation. January 9, 2018, Fox Carolina, soldier with ties to Simpsonville killed in Iraq. A Simpsonville family said a soldier with ties to the upstate has died while serving in Iraq. Willis Sullivan said military chaplains notified him Monday that his son, Javian J. Sullivan, was killed in Iraq. The incident happened Monday. J. had been involved in a group text with multiple family members on Sunday and the news on Monday came as quite the shock to the family, said Nico Henderson, J.'s sister-in-law. January 9, 2018 Kurdistan 24 Unknown gunman kill civilian, health worker in Kirkuk. Two people on Tuesday were killed in Kirkuk, according to eyewitnesses who reported armed men opened fire in the streets. Witnesses told Kurdistan 24 that shooters, whose identities are unknown, fired automatic weapons at a car carrying a health worker and another civilian in the Aden district in southern Kirkuk. January 9, 2018 Kurdistan 24 U.S. provides additional $75 million for post-is stabilization in Iraq. U.S. Ambassador to Iraq Douglas Silliman announced on Tuesday that Washington would be providing $75 million in additional funding to help stabilize Iraq following the full liberation of the country from the Islamic State is. The U.S. plans to provide a total of $150 million to stabilization efforts in Iraq in 2018 bringing Washington's total contribution to $265.3 million since 2015, according to the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad. January 9, 2018 Reuters, Kuwait to host Iraq Reconstruction Conference in February Kuwait will host an international conference in February on reconstruction in parts of Iraq devastated by the war against Islamic State, the state-run Kuwait news agency, KUNA said on Tuesday. Donor countries and organizations are expected to announce financial contributions at the meeting from February 12 to February 14, it reported. January 9, 2018 Vo, Storyteller Mattis tries to illustrate deeper meaning of military service. On a summer morning in a desolate corner of Iraq's western desert, Jim Mattis learned he'd narrowly evaded an assassination attempt. A Sunni Arab man had been caught planting a bomb on a road shortly before Mattis and his small team of Marines passed by. Told the captured insurgent spoke English, Mattis decided to talk to him. January 9, 2018 Reuters, Iraq returning displaced civilians from camps to unsafe areas. Iraqi security forces are forcibly returning civilians from refugee camps to unsafe areas in the predominantly Sunni Anbar province exposing them to death from booby traps or acts of vigilantism, refugees and aid workers say. January 7, 2018 NPR, one sister wants to rebuild. The other can't wait to leave. Farrah Khaled stands in front of the scorched and twisted steel beams of the destroyed Mosul University Library. Red and green ribbons stand out against the black and metal, remnants of a book drive Khaled and other students organized. Their aim was to destroy our culture, Khaled, 22, says about ISIS. To destroy every ancient thing, every beautiful thing. January 7, 2018 DoD, military strikes continue against ISIS terrorists in Syria, Iraq. U.S. and coalition military forces continued to attack the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria between December 29, 2017, and yesterday conducting 58 strikes consisting of 84 engagements, Combined Joint Task Force Operation Inherent Resolve officials reported today. Officials reported details of the most recent strikes, 
noting that assessments of results are based on initial reports. January 7, 2018 KP, policeman killed, another injured in landmine explosion in Anbar. A policeman was killed while another was injured Sunday in a landmine explosion at Al Qayyam district in Anbar, a security source was quoted as saying. A landmine planted by Islamic State went off while a police patrol was passing by Al Basatin area at Al Qayyam district in Anbar, leaving a policeman dead and another injured, the source told Baz News. January 7, 2018 Iraqi News, five people killed, injured in bomb blast near Baghdad Cafe. Five people were killed and injured Sunday in a bomb blast near Baghdad Cafe, a security source was quoted as saying. Speaking to Baghdad today, the source said, an explosive charge went off near a cafe at Al Sayrun neighborhood in southeastern the Iraqi capital, leaving one person dead and four others injured. Someday we as a people will understand you just can't reform savages. These people were born and bred to kill each other and us infidels. They know nothing else. No matter how much money or troops we throw at them they will never stop. Sadly we Americans with our kind and generous hearts always believe others aspire to live in peace and freedom, but that's not always the case. Nations get what they deserve, maybe Saddam Hussein was there for a reason. Please share if you agree we need to stop believing that every culture can have freedom and democracy. democracy.